Auzu billahi minash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrefil enbiya'i vel mursalin ve ala alihi tayyibin ve tahirin. Ama ba'd fa'uzu billahi minash-shaytani r-rajim. İnna Allaha ve melaikatehu yusalluna ala nebih. Ya eyyühellezine amanu sallu aleyhi ve sellimu teslima. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته واهل بيته وشيعه محبي امتي خصوصا على وارث كمال يغاسنا الغاسل عن سيدنا الشيخ عبد القادر الجيلاني <تصفيق> وسيدنا معين الدين حسن سنجري ابن يد والله تعالى عليهم اجمعين وقال عز وجل في شان حبيب الكريم ما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين صدق الله العظيم ريسبكتد برادرز اند سيسترز ان السلام والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته کی محمد سے وفات تو نے تو ہم تیرے ہیں یہ جہاں چیز ہے کیا لہ و قلم تیرے ہیں تو جان پاکی سر بسر نے آب و خاک اے نازنی واللہ جی جا ہم پاک تر روحی فدا اے نازری نازنی یا محمد بمن بے سر و ساما مدد قبل دین مدد کا و ایما مدد نسبت خود بس اگر کردم و بس منفعیل امزان کی نسبت بس اگر کوئے تو شد بے عدبیس ریسپیکٹر بردرس و سسٹرس ان سلام سلام علیکم رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہو ماشاءاللہ مطلعی اس دی سیکنڈ سیشن آف دیس سیرہ سیریز انشاءاللہ دی بلسد لائف آف دی بلسد ان دی اسٹیم پروفیٹ سیدہ محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وآلہ وسلم Uh, last week, uh, last Sunday, uh, we uh, left on Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib radiallahu uh, ta'ala anhu that he was the uh, son of, uh, uh, of Hashim uh, who died uh, when he went to Syria, which we have briefly mentioned about his life. And um, he was married to, the, the, to Salama. Uh, from the uh, the tribe of uh, Yasrib, mashallah, and her name was Salma radiallahu ta'ala anha, and uh, who bore a son, Shaiba. Uh, when uh, uh, the brother of uh, Sayyidina Hashim, whose name was Muttalib, uh, came to know that the widow of his brother Hashim moved to Yasrib with her son, uh, he went to uh, Yasrib and uh, convinced her to send the son back to Mecca so he would take care of the uh, Kaaba as a custodian that his father used to take care of uh, <clears throat> the uh, matters of uh, Kaabatullah pertaining to providing uh, uh, water, uh, food to the, uh, to the pilgrims and all that. So she uh, let her son, uh, Shaiba, uh, go uh, with his uncle Muttalib and uh, he brought, uh, uh, means Muttalib brought uh, Shaiba to, uh, to Mecca. When uh, people saw Muttalib with the Shaiba, uh, they called him uh, Abdul Muttalib instead of Shaiba, means a servant boy of Muttalib. And uh, actual name was Shaiba and uh, Muttalib tried to make people understand that, you know, he's not my servant boy. He's the son of my brother. But, you know, it didn't change. People used to call him Abdul Muttalib. <clears throat> and uh, Abdul Muttalib, radiallahu ta'ala, uh, is the uh, grandfather of our Prophet, Sina Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala, alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. There is a confusion here, so that I would like to uh, <clears throat> bring it to your attention and uh, try to uh, remove uh, the uh, that confusion. So many people say that in the ignorant days, people used to give the names of uh, the, like uh, Abdul Shams, Abdul Qamar, etc. But they, uh, you know, that's not the case. And our and especially the noble uh, lineage of the Prophet Sina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam are free from, um, from all types of shirk, even small things, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected, which I mentioned last week. So some try to give their own thoughts, but they need to study Quran and uh, Sunnah prior to saying anything, because it's, uh, it's, it's just a great liability for each and every one of us to say anything without knowledge and make sure whatever we are saying are attested from Quran and Sunnah or not, subhanAllah. So, 
let's talk about Abdul Muttalib. What exactly Abd means? Why was uh, Sheba uh, named Abdul Muttalib? Means the servant boy of uh, uh, Abdul Muttalib. So it uh, doesn't say like, you know, it looks like a shirk is involved here in the noble lineage of the Prophet Sina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa so Abd here uh, has uh, several meanings in Arabic language. Abd can denote uh, Abid, means worshipper, a person who worships. And another meaning is Khadim, a servant. When the word is uh, related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means the worshipful servant of Allah, means Abdullah. And uh, when it is joined towards someone else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has the meaning of uh, Khadim, Ghulam, or servant, or or, or, or employee. And in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in Surah Tun, uh, Nur, verse uh, uh, 32, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ayama min salihina min ibadikum wa means wed the singles among you and those who are fit among your uh, servants, like ibadukum, ibadukum, Imaikum means and uh, maid servants. So here, ibad uh, supplements like a uh, mudaf, the pronoun kum, ibad kum, meaning your slaves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sings, I mean, our slaves, means your slaves. Like So ibad, as I said, uh, plural of uh, abd. In this verse, abd is used for a dutiful servant, not worshipful servant. That's a difference. So the ibad, like plural, which is abd has also used in Quran for the nation of the Prophet Sina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The whole nation, the whole ummah is the servant of Sina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zumr, uh, verse uh, 53, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ عَنْفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنُطِ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ Say on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my servants, ibadi means my servants, abd is the the singular of ibad, Allah who have wronged themselves, means who have committed sin or anything. Do not lose hope of Allah's mercy. Inna Allah yafruzunuga jamia. Assuredly, Allah forgives all sins and and and and access Allah Akbar. Inna huwa Allahur Rahim. He is certainly most forgiving. Allahur uh, uh, Rahim means ever merciful. Subhanallah. So this verse is like, uh, like ibad, the second word that I just mentioned, means ibadu rasul is here in this, in this case, ibadu rasul is meant, meaning the whole nation is the slave of the Prophet Sina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Obedient slaves means obedient servants of Rasulullah So if we are all servant like slaves and like maid servants of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So I hope you understand what exactly means in Arab. Uh, so it's not like a jahiliya or anything that they used to give them. Like when they say like Abdul Nabi, if someone says, means uh, we're not worshipful servant of the Prophet, just uh, uh, uh, a dutiful servant or what do you call um, uh, obedient servant subhanallah of the prophet Sina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala and so we just learn from these verses and uh, Mawlana Rumi rahimahullah subhanallah says uh, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa barik wa salim Bandai khud khad ahmed dar rashad Jumla lam rab khak Qul ya ibad Mawlana Rumi says that the Prophet has made the entire creation his slaves. Read the Quran, Allahu Akbar, and you will find Allah is saying that, O oh Muhammad, say, declare that the whole Ummah is your Ghulam, is your Abd, Abd in the sense, obedient servants, subhanAllah. And Sayyidina, and Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, subhanAllah, that uh, one time he was giving a lecture and then he said, uh, inni, uh, uh, uh, what is that? Anni kuntu ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam fa kuntu abdahu wa khadimuhu Allahu Akbar that uh, 
Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that uh, I, will, I was with Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and kuntu abduhu wa khatimu and I was his servant, abduhu, that's what he's saying. Abduhu, who is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and wa khatimu and I was his attendant. So subhanallah, so Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said kuntu abduhu wa khatimu means I am the obedient, I was the obedient servant of the and here I mean, we are still obedient servant of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was saying that I was the obedient servant of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means not worshipful, worshipful servant of Allah an obedient servant of Sayyidina Rasulullah. So coming back to the, the name of Shaiba become, uh, which become Abdul Muttalib, means the servant boy of Muttalib. And Muttalib, uh, Abdul, uh, Muttalib was the paternal uncle of uh, Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib whose real name was Shaiba. Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib became the custodian of the Holy Kaaba. So before I talk about the custodianship of uh, Holy Kaaba, let me uh, uh, give a brief history of Kaaba. And its holiness, so because we are talking about the seerah of the Prophet in the Muhammad Wasallam, so we should know about uh, uh, very few things. Okay, so then we can understand uh, the seerah of the Prophet in the Muhammad Sallallahu Taala Wasallam. So the word um, Kaaba, which uh, lovi meaning means the lexically meaning a cube uh, shaped object, is uh, mentioned in, in the Quran. Uh, in two places, actually, Kaaba, which is stated in the uh, the verses of uh, uh, various uh, names such as uh, uh, Al Bayt, the house, Baytullah, the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Baytul Atiq, the ancient house, Subhanallah, Baytul Haram, Baytul Muharram, means the sacred uh, uh, house, Masjid Al Haram means that the sacred masjid is also known as, uh, among the public actually, as uh, Kaaba al-Mu'azzama, uh, al means the Grand Kaaba, subhanAllah. So, Allahumma uh, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alaikum when the Prophet Sayyidina Adam was sent down uh, to earth and he was given the duty of uh, building a place of worship at the present site of Kaaba in Mecca, according to Tabari and uh, the history, subhanAllah. And uh, in the Holy uh, Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says uh, that Inna awwala baytim wudi'a linnasi lalladhi bi bakkata mubarakan wa huda lil alameen, subhanAllah. That the first house established for mankind was at Bakka, a place of blessing and guidance for all being subhanAllah, Surah Al Imran, verse uh, 96. So, Makkah is known as uh, the Ummul Qura, means mother of town, and Mecca is also called Becca, that's what the Quran says, and uh, which is the meaning of uh, safe town. And in, in, in Babylonian uh, dictionary, both Mecca and Becca means house. The greater uh, area of Mecca is surrounded by, by Yemen in south, uh, the, the, the Mediterranean Sea in the north, and uh, the Persian Gulf in the east, uh, and uh, the Red Sea in the west. It is uh, at the crossroad of intercontinental routes in particular uh, uh, uh, Africa, where Jeddah is in particular as a harbor by the Red Sea. Uh, and like played an important role in connecting uh, Mecca to the sea routes, uh, uh, uh, you know, in Mecca, the area where the Kaaba was situated was called Al Batha, and uh, and the town center was called Batunu Makkah. So, Subhanallah, in the hadith that is uh, required by Imam uh, Bukhari and Imam Muslim from Sayyidina Abi Zar radiallahu ta'ala, and when then when uh, Sayyidina Abi Zar asked the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu masjidin wudi'a fil ardi awwal, means Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which mosque was set up first uh, on earth, subhanAllah, then the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al Masjidul Haram, subhanAllah, the Masjidul Haram, that is it. In Mecca, and then uh, he is still asked, Summa means then what? Then he said, Summa al Masjid al Aqsa. Then the Prophet Muhammad said, The second masjid was Masjid al Aqsa. And uh, subhanAllah, it's a hadith that uh, you know, uh, Sayyidina Abu Zar asked, uh, How long the space of time between their uh, you know, setting up? The Prophet Muhammad said that it was 40 years, and whenever the time comes for prayer, Pray there 
for that it is a mosque subhanallah so there so kabatullah was the first masjid on earth and then masjid al-aqsa subhanallah so the the valley of makkah was also chosen and made holy along with the first human being after uh, the, uh, the the flood in the time of sayyidina nu al islam the kaaba was buried under sand for a long period of time makkah was uh, like then established by a great prophet of allah sayyidina ibrahim ala nabiyyina wa alayhi wassalatu wassalam that the, the, the father of uh, the prophet, prophets like Abu Ibrahim, Abu Anbiya, and uh, had a wife called uh, Sarah, who had not born uh, him any child. So Sitana Sarah gave her the daughter of uh, Pharaoh, who was the slave girl of Sitana, uh, slave girl of Sitana, uh, Sitana Sarah. Uh, her name was uh, Hajra, and in English we say Hagar, Hagar, okay? Uh, to Sayyidina Ibrahim and they married after her emancipation, subhanAllah. From this marriage, Ismail uh, uh, was born to whom the, uh, the, uh, the light uh, of the Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was subhanAllah, transmitted, nur muhammad transmitted, Allahu Akbar. So Hadrata uh, uh, Sara asked the Ibrahim to take Hajra and Ismail to a remote place. This was, of course, only the visible reason behind the, the greater Allah. So underlying uh, uh, divine will, basically, subhanAllah. So we should not say anything against it. Sarah, alayhi salam. Anyway, so, the, so with the command of Allah, Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, took them to Mecca. And uh, guided on the way to uh, by the archangel Sayyidina Jibril alayhi salam. Upon reaching uh, Mecca, the angel uh, told Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, to uh, how uh, how was his family over there. Subhanallah. But Ibrahim alayhi salam was kind of hesitant, saying, "This place is neither fit for agriculture nor for for dira, what do you call that uh, animal husbandry." Subhanallah. So he kind of hesitant, and then Jibril alayhi salam comforted him. Say, indeed, but from the offspring of your sons, the unlettered prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will emerge and with him will be completed the divine word, the words of unity, the Tawheed. And this is what Ibn Sa'ad, Tabaqat Ibn Sa'ad has mentioned. Allah. And in the hadith that Imam Bukhari uh, has recorded, hadith number 3364, Subhanallah, recorded in his Sahih from Sayyidina Abdullah ibn uh, Abbas. It gives the whole history, which is the, the reliable and authentic, that the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, took uh, our mother, Hata Hajra. The, and it is uh, narrated by uh, actually Abdullah ibn Abbas, ta'ala, and he heard from the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, that uh, uh, he brought. Uh, Hajra and his son is still an infant to Makkah. He left them behind a tree which near the fount of uh, Zamzam, awaiting to be emerged. Allah Akbar. He also gave uh, them a basket of dates and a jug of uh, water. When he was about to go back, must leave them alone. How the Hajra, alayhi salam, subhanAllah, asked, Why are you leaving in this place where there is? No human, no animal, nothing. You are like living in a place where there is no water. It's a wadi azizara. I mean, it's an uncultivated man. And then he didn't uh, say anything. Allahu Akbar. Then he, like, she started asking the same question, like many times. Then, uh, Subhanallah. Uh, then Hajra said, "Did Allah command you to leave us here in this barren uh, land?" Said so Ibrahim alayhi salam said, "Yes." Then Hajra said, in great submission and trust in Allah, that in that case, our Lord will protect us, will not be forsaken. SubhanAllah. Look at the iman of uh, Sitana Hajra, alayhi salam. No complaint, nothing. So then uh, she, uh, she then uh, returned to her son Ismail. Ibrahim, and Ibrahim, alayhi salam, on the uh, other hand, 
uh, began walking away. As soon as Ibrahim got out of the sight of both uh, Sayyidina Ismail and Sayyidina uh, Hajar uh, he opened his hands towards the sky and uh, supplicated, which is mentioned in uh, Subhanallah Quran. Rabbana inni askantu min zurriyati bibadin ghayri zizaran inda baytika al-muharram Rabbana liqimu salata faj'al afidatan min al-nasi tahwa ilayhim warzuqhum min al-thamarati la'allahum yashkurun Subhanallah Then he said, Oh Allah, Oh Rabb, Oh Ya Allah, I have settled some of my family, uh, my uh, my offspring in, in a valley of no vegetation by your sacred house. Our Lord, so that uh, they may uh, perform the prayers, so uh, make the hearts of some people inclined towards them and provide them with fruits uh, that they may be thankful, subhanAllah. So, subhanAllah. Leaving his only son and wife back in this barren, uh, uncultivated land, Allah Akbar, Ibrahim Islam again prayed to uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that uh, Quran says in Surah Al Baqarah, verse one twenty six, "Where is the call Ibrahim?" And then Allah uh, and Ibrahim. Uh, supplicated and he made a dua that Rabbi Jal Hada Baladan Amin and Warzuk Ahlahu Minas Samarati Man Amana Minhu Billahi Wal Yomid Akhir. Ya Allah, oh my Lord, make this land of safety and uh, feed its people with fruits such of uh, them as believe in Allah and the last day. So the, the, the, the, the, uh, the, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his prayers and exempting the unbelievers from his uh, mercy and threatening them in, uh, in, the, in the same verse that قَالَ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَأُمَّتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا ثُمَّ أَضْطَرُّهُ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارَ بِئَسَ الْمَصِيرُ means Allah SWT said uh, and whoever disbelieves I will give him a little enjoyment then I will consign him to the punishment of the fire Allah Akbar but be al masir means how miserable the destiny is. So even today, Subhanallah, based on my experience, uh, due to the prayers of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah fills the hearts of uh, the pilgrims, the hujjad, uh, with love and respect towards the holy Kaaba. Souls uh, find unparalleled peace and tranquility in those holy lands, subhanallah. <coughs> And uh, the subhanAllah, and you come back to the hadith, subhanAllah, the little uh, water was uh, left by, you know, the, the, the little water like left by Ibrahim al Islam uh, for Sitana Hajira and uh, uh, son Ibrahim was uh, consumed in no time, subhanAllah, hoping to find some water. Hata Hajira ran between the hills of Safa and Marwa, subhanAllah, like seven times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved this. One. Anyway, so the distance between these two hills is about 400 uh, meters. When she was running uh, between the hills, she was also watching, subhanAllah, her baby with the corner of, uh, of, of her eyes, subhanAllah. But there was no trace of life around. No human beings, not even birds. When she yet again reached the hill of Marwa, she heard a voice. Allah, keep silent and listen. Allah, then she answered, yes, I can hear you. Please help us if you can. Then kind of, she replied in that uh, like high tone, subhanAllah. She then saw an angel digging with the either its, uh, its, uh, its wing or heels, the, the fount of uh, the Zamzam. And in another version of Hadith is that from the heels of Sayyidina Ismail al-Islam, when he was subhanAllah rubbing and uh, you know, crying for the water. So subhanAllah, water gushed forth, Allahu Akbar. So joyful Sayyidina Hajra alayhi salam first filled her water skin, uh, yet the more uh, she took uh, with her hand from the water, the more it like, sprang. Uh, she immediately started making a little well around the spring to collect the gushing water, repeating the words, zam, zam, zam, zam, at the same time for the water to stop. Allah, zam, zam means stop, stop. Uh, 
سيدنا رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم سيد يرحم الله يرحم الله آه آه أم إسماعيل لو تركت زمزم أو قال لو لم تعرف من الماء لكانت زمزم عين المعين الله أكبر مي الله بستو uh, his mercy upon the mother of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam had she not hastened to fill her water skin with water from the Zamzam well, Zamzam would have been a streaming, uh, flowing uh, uh, uh, uh, on the surface of earth. Subhanallah. And Sina Ibn Abbas further added that the uh, Prophet Sina Ibrahim alayhi salam brought Ismail and his mother to Mecca and she was circling Ismail and uh, she had a, a water skin with her. Subhanallah. So the mother and her son, Hadith Ismail, were continuing to, uh, to live uh, by only on the water from Zamzam. After a while, passing uh, by the spring of uh, Zamzam, the tribe of Jurham, Banu Jurham, saw birds like uh, flying uh, up and down from a certain place, guessing there be a trace of life. This, they sent two people to check it out. Once they found out about uh, the spring, they asked permission to settle near uh, the Zamzam. Uh, the Hajra السلام, allowed them on the condition that they do not claim ownership of the spring. It's all from Hadith, okay? So the the Bani, the, the Jurhumites, so the, the Banu Jurham, the clan of Jurham, Jur, Jurham Banu Jurham <coughs> agreed, making them uh, the, the first tribe to settle in a Mecca. Subhanallah. And this is how they started. Uh, living there and uh, since we are in Dhul Hijjah let's talk about Sina Ibrahim and Ismail also in Surah Al-Safat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about uh, Ismail that فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِيَةِ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَسْبَعُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَا عَدَى طَرَى قَالَ يَا بَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُومَ سَتَرِدُنِي إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ السَّعِبِرِ then when Sayyidina Ismail was old enough to accompany him, Sayyidina Ibrahim asked, Oh my son, I uh, see in a dream that I am sacrificing you. See what you think. Subhanallah. Then Ismail said, Oh my father, do as you are commanded. You will find me God willing. One of the, uh, the steadfast Subhanallah, both father and son were prepared to sacrifice uh, Ismail's life, but shaitan wanted to dissuade them. Allah Akbar, So Ibn Abbas narrated, when the rituals were uh, enjoined upon Ibrahim salam, shaitan appeared to him at the Masa and uh, raised uh, with him. But Sayyidina Ibrahim got the first uh, got there first, okay? Then Jibreel alayhi salam took him, I mean Sayyidina Ibrahim to Jamaratul uh, Jama, uh, Jama uh, Aqaba and Shaitan appeared to him. So he stoned him uh, with, uh, with the seven pebbles, Allahu Akbar, until he disappeared. Then Shaitan appeared to uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam at Jamaratul Wusta and he stabbed him. Uh, so what he did was he stoned him with seven pebbles, subhanAllah. So in this narration, Ibrahim alayhi salam stoned shaitan three times. In other uh, uh, narrations, shaitan appeared separately to Ibrahim, Hata Hajra, and Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. So each time he tried to convince them that Ibrahim was about to commit a terrible crime, each time they attested that if it was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they must accept it. Each of them is torn shaitan. Allah and it is <clears throat> narrated by many muhaddisi in Tabari, Hakim, like in Mustadrak, and many ahadis. <clears throat> it seems impossible to us that someone could be uh, like subhanAllah uh, be prepared to sacrifice their beloved child, the, the person most dear to them in the world, especially when obstacles have been placed in their way in three separate occasions. Allah. However, the family of uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, were so forceful in their rejection of uh, disobeying Allah that they threw stones at shaitan. It is this stoning that we remember at Hajj. Subhanallah. I can talk long on this one, but let me move on. So as Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, uh, prepared a knife to sacrifice his son, 
and shroud to bury him in a the, in a, so he could not face Ismail Islam. So he turned his face away. According to Ibn Kasir Tafsir, uh, they both remembered Allah and testified their faith in him, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, because he was uh, uh, about to make a sacrifice, Ismail alayhi salam, uh, subhanAllah, because he was about to die. Then Ibrahim prepared to sacrifice his son, and then the knife was at Ismail's neck, Allah alayhi salam, he heard a voice calling uh, to him, stop, like, aslama, uh, uh, aslama lil then when they had submitted and uh, he put uh, his forehead down, Allah Akbar, nadaynahu an ya Ibrahim, Allah says, we called out to him, O Ibrahim, subhanAllah, قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, you have fulfilled the vision. Thus we, uh, we reward the doers of good. إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْبَلَاءُ الْمُبِينَ This way is certainly an evident test. Allah, it was a great test. وَفَيْدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ And we uh, redeem, means exchange uh, him with a great uh, sacrifice. وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ and we left uh, with him for uh, later generations. Salamun ala Ibrahim. Peace be upon Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Subhanallah. So Ibrahim alayhi salam's uh, sacrifice, uh, a, a, a white uh, horned ram instead of his son, like the stoning of the pillars. You know, we remember this sacrifice every year at Hajj and we do sacrifice, subhanAllah. Uh, it represents the devotion of Sayyidina Ibrahim. It, it reminds those days and we know how to do it, but we need to learn from this story. And who was ready to sacrifice his beloved son for Allah's sake and the reward and blessing they receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a, as a result of their submission. And remembering the journey every time that time we do qurbani should bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, it is not the animal that matters but our, our, our willingness to submit wholeheartedly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So <laughs> coming back to, uh, to, the, to building the uh, history of Kaaba, many years later, when the Prophet Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabiina alayhi salatu wasalam arrived, like when, when he arrived uh, in Mecca to leave his wife and son there, he uh, Say to his son, like he came after a long time and Sitana Hajra uh, died, and uh, then he came and he uh, said to uh, Sina Ismail that uh, my Lord has commanded me that we build a house and you will help me. Subhanallah. And Quran says in Surah Al Hajj, very beautiful, Subhanallah. That uh, <clears throat> we showed Ibrahim the location of the house and do not associate anything with me and purify my house for those who circle around. Those who stand to pray, those who kneel and prostrate, subhanAllah. So the Prophet Ismail salam, along with the Archangel Sina, Na, Jibreel salam, carried stones and the Prophet Ibrahim directed Sayyidina Ismail while standing the, uh, what you call the, the, the, the, the marble block known as Maqam Ibrahim upon which the, the blessed footsteps of the Prophet Ibrahim Sayyidina Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu can be, um, can still be seen today. Work like an um, elevator, according to the history, in the construction of uh, the Kaaba. And the, the Quran uh, further says, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْقَوَائِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Subhanallah, Subhanallah. And when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam built the, uh, the foundation of the, the house, Baytullah, with Ismail. And then they submitted to Allah and says, Oh Lord, accept this from us. You are the all hearing and the all knowing. When the construction of Kaaba was complete, the, the, the Prophet Sayyidina uh, Ibrahim and Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam then prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Rabbana wa jalna muslimaini laka wa min zurriyatina Ummata Muslimata Lak means, O oh Lord, make us both Muslims submitted to you. 
and our descendant, a Muslim community, submitted to you, subhanAllah. So show us our rights to of, of worship and turn towards us, Allah Akbar. You are the Tawwab um, Rahim, uh, ever returning uh, the the most uh, merciful, Subhanallah. And this is we have spoken about this last week. But anyway, uh, then he further the uh, further uh, submitted to Allah and uh, supplicating that Rabbana wa baas fihim Rasulah minhum yatlu alaihim ayatika wa yuallimuhum al kitab wa al hikmat wa yuzakihim. Oh Allah, raise uh, uh, up among them a messenger from them to recite your signs uh, to them and teach them the book and wisdom and purify them. So the, the signs were given from here that our Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to come to this, uh, to, to Makkah, SubhanAllah. So Allah then commanded the Prophet Ibrahim to invite all the people to perform the pilgrimage to the Kaaba, SubhanAllah. That uh, in uh, Surah Al Hajj, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that "Adzina fi nas bil Hajj atuka rijalam wa ala kulli dhamin yatina min kulli min kulli fajin amir." Allah Akbar. Announce the Hajj to mankind. Oh, Ibrahim, announce. They will come to you on foot and on every uh, uh, sort of a, uh, lean animal, coming by every distant road. Subhanallah. Upon receiving these uh, divine um, commandments and instruction, Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, climbed up uh, the mountain of Abu Qubais and called out in all directions, informing the people that Allah had made it obligatory for people to visit the Kaaba and perform the pilgrimage. Allah Akbar. Subhanallah, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa Sayyidina Muhammad. Subhanallah. So according to uh, Ibn Ishaq, Imam Ibn Ishaq, Ibn, Imam Ibn Hisham, and uh, Imam Abdul Razak, the great, the, the great grand teacher of uh, Imam Bukhari, Subhanallah, and Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham, they are the uh, Ibn Ishaq, especially the Tabai, Allah, the one who first wrote the Sirat of Nabi Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa sallam, that after making this proclamation, Allah sent angel Sayyidina, Archangel Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam to the Prophet Ibrahim and showed him the limits of Safa and Marwa and the haram -e sharif the, the, the, the, the, the holy sanctuary. He also told him to place a stone to mark out each site and later Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam all of the required rites of the Hajj. Sayyidina Ibrahim then taught Sayyidina Ismail and Sayyidina Ismail taught the rites of the Hajj to his son Sayyidina Qaidar that goes all the way to Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib subhanAllah. So after that everyone came to visit Hijaz from near and far also began uh, to uh, visit the Baytullah. The, the Kaaba therefore became an important center of religion and captured the attention of, uh, of all humanity, subhanAllah. So then later on, things changes. So in the time, uh, Makkah al mukarramah developed into a city, like after 200 years, 207 years, according to Ibn Hisham and others of, uh, uh, of uh, Sayyidina Ismail and Sayyidina Haja when they started living. And after like 207 years, uh, like after the emerge of uh, Zamzam, you would say. Then uh, when they were not allowed to, uh, uh, subhanAllah, that uh, uh, when uh, like uh, Banu Jurhums were not allowed to settle by, uh, uh, actually they are different, I'm sorry, Khuzah, I'm sorry. The Khuzah took Mecca by forcing uh, after 207 years. Emerging uh, when... Uh, uh, like when they were not allowed to settle by Jurhamids, the sons of uh, Sayyidina Ismail -Salam, remained uh, neutral in this battle between Jurhamids and uh, Banu Khuzaya. And they were left unharmed by like new occupying force. But before when they occupy the, the Jur, what do you call the Khazad, uh, Banu Khuzaya, Banu Khuzaya, you know, occupied that place. And uh, that made the Jurhumites left. 
So they did one thing very bad that they concealed the Zamzam water in like Subhanallah that time. Alayaz Billah. And uh, the Banu Khaza ruled the city for, for long years, during which they deviated from the right path of Sayyidina Ibrahim al-Islam. They supported the worship of idols, promoting the deviant uh, the, uh, faith. They set up the idol name Hubal when the offspring of Ismail became more powerful under the leadership of Husay. Husay is the great grandfather of Sayyidina Rasulullah. So, what, they, what he did was the and uh, his people, you know, they expelled Huza out of Mecca after like uh, 400 years, 440 years. So, Sayyidina Husay established. The, uh, the Darun Radwa, which uh, functioned like the parliament, parliament of the city state of Mecca, along with the other institution uh, he founded to organize the social and religious life. There was certain a duty in regards to the Kaaba, which have been placed uh, uh, ever since, uh, like today, uh, the, the day it was, was uh, built, subhanAllah. At that time, these duties were carried out by the Prophet uh, Ismail al -Islam. They were then taken by his son. Like, he means their uh, uh, uh, descendants until eventually the tribe of Quraysh took these duties themselves. And these duties like, uh, duties like uh, uh, co the commandership of battles and the protection of the flag, th that's called Qiyada. And the, the second thing was Asidana, means guarding the task of... Uh, of the king for the curtains and cover of the Kaaba and the position of the key, which was considered as the most uh, honorable one. And the third thing was a sikaya, means watering, offering fresh water to the Hajjah, the pilgrims, and taking care of, uh, of, the, uh, of the well of uh, Zamzam. And the fourth thing was a rifada, like feeding, uh, hosting, and housing the poor uh, uh, hujjad, poor uh, pilgrims out of uh, the, uh, the collected taxes. So they were under the responsibility of Husay, and before uh, his death, he requested in his will that these duties, uh, these duties be uh, passed on to his sons, Abdul Dar and Abdul Manaf, uh, initiating the uh, beginning of the passage of these duties from father to, to the son and thereafter, Allah. And it has, uh, Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham has talked uh, extensively on this one. And then the Kaaba became the center of attraction in terms of uh, worship, source of guidance and its holiness. This is why the Kaaba was subjected to uh, many attacks by many uh, pagan tribes who were jealous of its uh, holiness. Uh, so in the centuries before the outrageous assault by the ruler of uh, Yemen, um, like Abraha, three other uh, pagan rulers from uh, Yemen had wanted to destroy it. During one of uh, these attacks, certain people from the sons of Hosail provoked one of the, these rulers to destroy the Kaaba and take the treasure uh, uh, hidden there. So the reason they tried to do this because uh, uh, uh, this was uh, because they wished to be rid of the dominion of these rulers and the sons of Hosea believed in the sanctity of the Kaaba. See, they knew from the past experience and you know the history that any attack made upon the Kaaba would be the cause of ruin and destruction of its attacker, uh, attackers. Allah. So as the uh, the Yemeni's rulers and all of his uh, soldiers set out to destroy the Kaaba. They were uh, left buried in the sand. And upon the warning and guidance of uh, Jewish scholars who were with them, the ruler abandoned uh, his uh, evil intent towards the Kaaba and uh, and uh, subsequently showed respect and honor for the Baytullah and towards the people of uh, Makkah and promised to show them favor. So they were saved from the destruction. So I'm just uh, kind of giving the references from Ibn uh, Abdul Razak ibn al-Himam and Ibn Hisham, the early 
historians and the muhaddisin and so from then uh, on uh, the belief that the kaaba and the and so the makkah and the people of quraysh were under subhanallah divine protection uh, became well established among the people and after like sidna ibrahim alayhi salam the acts of uh, worship performing at the baitullah continued according to the principles of tawhid belief in the oneness of allah that he is the only deity of worship until the time when people began to worship many gods so however when idol worship began to appear in makkah the idolaters become uh, began to place various idols both in and uh, and around the kaaba despite this the kaaba was never associated with idols and continued to be remembered as baitullah sharif subhanallah so when makkah like in fatah makkah the idols in the kaaba were smashed and the inside and uh, and and the outside of the kaaba was washed with zamzam Uh, water under the supervision of the prophet sinna muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wa sallam until this day the kaaba is washed with zamzam and rose water clean and scented uh, with beautiful fragrances and its uh, the covering is pl- replaced with a new one on the day of arafa and uh, the day before the eid is al adha so the eid like it's, it's a feast uh, feast uh, we all know that uh, anyway so there were uh, certain duties in regards to the kaaba which have been in place ever since the day it was built at the at the at that time these duties were carried out by uh, by the uh, you know the prophet ismail al islam and then they were then taken by his son and then later by descendant until eventually the tribe of quraish uh, for her bin malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the great great grandfather of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam took these duties upon themselves and consequently sayyidna abdul muttalib became the caretaker of kaaba after uh, his father sayyidna hashim uh, he got, uh, he used to guard the kaaba which is like sidana and providing fresh water to the pilgrimage it's called uh, siqaya means watering and taking care of the pilgrims and uh, subhanallah i'm going to stop here and then we going to we are going to talk about uh, the birth of the prophet and uh, and about zamzam and abdul muttalib and his sons subhanallah uh, next week so subhanallah i want to give some like background of uh, and the history of the kaabatullah and uh, connection with tawhid with the with the, the care, with the caretakers of kaabatullah so uh, alhamdulillah i mentioned today and next week uh, i'm going to talk about her abdul muttalib and his son and the the second uh, the the sacrifice of sayyidna uh, abdullah because our prophet sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to call himself ibn zabihan means i am the son of two sacrificed one one is ismail and the other one is Abdullah so we are going to talk about what was that sacrifice and how was the how was the zamzam uh, you know recovered uh, when that was concealed by the jurhumites uh, so inshallah we'll talk next week and alhamdulillah we are learning about uh, the seerah of the prophet sayyid muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam may allah uh, bless us and uh, and uh, give us uh, increase our iman um, through the mediation of sayyidina rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam subhanak allahumma bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik subhanallah allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala sayyidina muhammad wa barik wa sallim wa ma alayna illa al balagh now i'm